Hi everybody, Mrs. Kirby here, back to tell you your Bible story this week. This week our story is about Jesus' crucifixion. And I'm sure many of you have heard this story before, but I'm just gonna let you know I'm not using any toys or any props today because this is such a serious story. I want us to not forget that we really need to take this seriously. Here's the one thing that we'll do, because I, when I read the Bible, I think it's really important to try to imagine this story as if it was the first time that it happened because these stories are real and so i'm going to wear this scarf and if you want you can find something at home that makes you feel like you're in bible times because this scarf is something kind of like in my imagination anyway what women during jesus time would have worn and so when i wear this and i tell the bible story i am imagining that i was one of the women who was actually there with Jesus. Okay, here we go. It was hard to recognize Jesus as he stumbled along the streets of Jerusalem. He was beaten and bloody, and he was wearing a crown of thorns that someone had pressed into his head. The soldiers made him carry a huge wooden cross up the hill out of Jerusalem, but because his body was so weak, Jesus kept stumbling under the weight of the big wooden beam. So eventually the soldiers found another man in the crowd named Simon of Cyrene and made him carry the cross while Jesus followed along behind. They made it out of the city and up the hill of Golgotha, which means the skull. At the top of the hill, they laid Jesus down on the cross and hammered huge spikes into his wrists and his feet. Then they set three crosses up on the hill because there were three men being crucified that day, not just Jesus, but two criminals. They put Jesus right in the middle with the criminals on his right and on his left. Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. One of the criminals who hung beside him laughed and made fun of Jesus along with the crowd. He said, if you really are the Messiah, come down from the cross, save yourself and us too. But the other criminal gasped out, what are you saying? We deserve our punishment, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, because of your faith, you will be with me today in paradise. Darkness came over the whole land and it was very windy. Those who loved Jesus gathered close around the cross to be near to him. After about three hours, Jesus called out and said two things. He said, John, please take care of my mother. And my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Jesus died. A huge earthquake came across the whole land. Rocks split open, the temple curtain was torn in two, and everybody was very frightened. As evening came, the Jews knew they needed to take the bodies down from the crosses before the Sabbath. So a man named Joseph of Arimathea went to talk to Pilate, the governor. Now Joseph was a rich man, a member of the Sanhedrin, and a secret follower of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate agreed that Joseph could take the body and put it in his own tomb. So Joseph of Arimathea and another secret Christian that you might remember, Nicodemus, went and took Jesus' body down from the cross. They wrapped his body in clean linen cloths and then placed it in Joseph's tomb. It was a cave-like tomb built into a hill in a garden that Joseph owned. As Jesus' friends laid him in the tomb and moved a huge rock to cover the opening, some other members of the Sanhedrin were going to Pilate. They reminded Pilate, Now, this Jesus said that he would rise from the dead after three days. So 
We're wondering if we can post a guard outside the tomb just so his followers don't come and take the body and then say that Jesus rose from the dead. So Pilate gave them permission to take soldiers and post a guard outside the tomb to make sure there were no grave robbers. Now, early on Sunday morning, some women who were some of Jesus' friends came to the tomb because they wanted to prepare Jesus' body for burial. Even though Joseph and Nicodemus had wrapped his body, the women wanted to show him honor by putting burial spices in with Jesus' body. As the women approached the tomb, they began to wonder among themselves how they would move that huge stone out of the way. But as they got closer, they saw that the stone had already been moved and the tomb was open. They hurried to the tomb, their hearts beating hard, and they went in. Jesus' body was gone. And there at the tomb were two men in shining clothes. Why do you look for the living among the dead? One of the angels asked. Don't you remember what Jesus said? That the Son of Man would suffer and die, but be raised to life on the third day? The women were astonished at this news and hurried away to tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. That is the end of our Bible story today, and I hope you realize how amazing this story is. It is the best story because it is the story that all of scripture leads up to. The story of how Jesus took our sins, the wrong things that we do, and suffered for us on the cross. Jesus took our punishment and suffered not only in his body, but also in his spirit on the inside because he loves us and wanted us to have a way to come to God and to be able to have a relationship with God. But the story isn't just about Jesus suffering and dying. It's about Jesus being more powerful even than death and sin. And so he conquered death and came back to life. And that is why we can rejoice today.